Hello everyone, this is Kelly Beard of KarmicTools.com and this is your weekly forecast for April 7th to the 13th of 2024. So our quote for the week says, By owning your truth, your energy, confidence, and sense of power and purpose return to you tenfold. Welcome to the Aries Super New Moon Solar Eclipse. Deep breath. So we are kicking off our week on Monday with the eclipse. This is going out on Sunday. I'm cutting it close, y'all. I went under for the Pisces moon and just came out in time for the eclipse, just for you. This is number four of six, so we're winding down to the last few Aries Libra eclipses we'll have to go through to do this recalibration in these departments. But change is definitely in the air around your identity and purpose, which is going to automatically shift your relationships and collaborations. When you change, everyone around you has to change or go away. And we're all changing right now. So stay as grounded in your body and centered in your heart as you possibly can to navigate this terrain because it's very new. So you want to be present as well. Me included, it's easy to assume that whatever you've been through before is what you're going to go through again or whatever energy you've experienced before, you're going to recognize it. Mm -mm. We're in new territory now. It's a new day. So let's define our terms as consciously as possible. And it may not be where we can say we want X, Y, Z, although some people I know are very clear on what they want to manifest. But I'm one of those that'll teach you to go for the essence, go for the vibration. I want to feel safe, secure, happy, joyful. I want to know that I have a rhythm to my day to day. I want to know that I have a purpose when I get out of bed every day. That is can come in whatever form and shape that the universe wants to bring it to me in for my highest good and for the most positive outcomes. And I would add that we need to start saying we no longer need to learn the old ways. The old way of learning was going through hardship and struggle and strife and tragedy and loss and suffering. Mm -mm. I've been claiming that new rule for a long time. I no longer need to learn through that kind of loss and suffering. I can learn my lessons and I can get the memo from the universe with ease and grace. So claim it. We need all the ease and grace around these evolutions because you're rebirthing your path and purpose. And that's pretty big. And we have other alignments in the mix here that are adding to this kind of once in a lifetime opportunity, let's say. So this is an annual initiation of the new you, the new year, and a brand new beginning that is available for those who choose the new. Leave the old and past behind and bravely step into the unknown. This is an annual opportunity to release imbalances within ourselves and our relationships or environment. Anything that is preventing the Aries new beginning from unfolding naturally. The Capricorn last quarter moon on April 1st illuminated what you are no longer responsible for personally. You are in completely new territory now, and the Aries new moon launches us all to the next level. No one is exempt, okay? Because I'm cooking up something new too, y'all. Prepare yourselves. Those of you who have been with me since 99 know every once in a while I shed a skin and start presenting things in a whole new way. And that's what these eclipses are doing to me. Consider how much has been cleared and released just in the last year alone. Then consider that the eclipse activates 10 and 20 year cycles, rebooting on multiple levels. Finally, consider that this is a supermoon, intensifying the experience of being in the unknown, void of darkness, and space of conception. Deep breath. The darkness is not bad. We need to learn to get comfortable with the unknown and to allow things enough time in the darkness to gestate to their full development so that they can be strong and fortified when they're in their life form, just like us. If you consider Aries as the true beginning, then this first seed point is vital to the next 6 to 12 months of growth and expansion. It is truly time to close out and release anything no longer essential to your reality or evolution. The message is, do not rush, but neither postpone. This is the week to dedicate yourself to a new identity and purpose, And develop it throughout spring and summer so that you can activate and ground something tangible by fall harvest. If you did the requisite clearing with the Libra full moon lunar eclipse, a new cycle can truly begin. This lunation gives us a chance around the same time every year to check in with our internal balance 
and what will be required of each of us to truly anchor this emerging identity and new purpose. It may also reveal where more external balance is required for you to maintain relationships or agreements with others, or not. With eclipses, we start clearing things out. Most likely, some of both will manifest. Each month is building on the previous in that with the Pisces Virgo lunation, we got to go within and reset our internal systems and determine how much we could really handle. While Aries Libra lunation gives us the opportunity to reset the balance between self and other because next month's Taurus Scorpio lunation will support the literal changes we need to go forward clean and integrity with this new beginning. Do your best to stay alert and present, especially when navigating with others in relationship or community. Take some me time because Aries time is the once a year when it's all about you. Deep breath. So yes, we've already done the clearing in the Libra department. And now we're initiating in our Aries department, something we do every year, but with the eclipses, now we're looking at bigger 10 and 20 year cycles. So if that's too big to think about, just think that this little 18 month process of Aries of Libra eclipses is anchoring a full 20 year cycle, just so you know. And it was literally 2005, April 8th, 2005 was the last time we had the eclipse in this exact zone. So the same day as the eclipse, a little later in the afternoon, on Monday the 8th, we do Yeye Tisha's monthly new moon money pouring ritual. If you join her Patreon for $5, you get the new moon money pouring. But if you join for $25, you get both the full moon burden burning ritual and the new moon money pouring ritual. Every month with Yeye live is a pretty big deal to sit at the knee of an elder and learn this directly. So I highly recommend it. She does a lot of amazing things for the community with that Patreon money. So you are giving to larger causes as you give to support her. And we are all upgrading. So this year is a reset for everyone. No one is exempt. So that was Monday. On Wednesday the 10th, Mars conjunct Saturn. This is a very big deal because this is only every two years. And two years ago, Saturn was in Aquarius, so it's been probably a good little while since they got together in Pisces. Let's see. Last time Mars conjuncted Saturn in Pisces, it happened twice in 94 and 96. But we're only getting one shot at it this time. So mid-90s, last chance we got. So think of what 30-year process has rolled through since that time. If Mars is going through Pisces right now, next, Saturn will tip into Aries in 2025, and Mars will probably catch up with it there, too, and really reset an even bigger cycle. So let's look at that. Let's look at what we're developing internally with Mars and Saturn in Pisces so that we know what we're going to birth next when they both link up in Aries. Deep breath. Any conjunction marks a beginning, and in this case, Mars governs your identity and desires, while Saturn dictates your definition of reality and the constraints of the physical world. If you are feeling frustrated, it might signal a need to develop more clarity and focus, followed by practical actions to achieve your goals. The influence of Saturn varies depending on individual temperament. Some find comfort in limits, structure, and boundaries, while others rebel against such confines and conformity which leads to its own set of additional conflicts or challenges that we have to deal with along the way. The shadow side of this activation tends to manifest as a sense of restriction followed by intense anger. However, this energy also allows you the option or opportunity to define the appropriate course of action and then meticulously plan to execute your plan under a more supportive cosmic alignment, Ashe. Proceeding with consciousness increases the likelihood of success compared to impulsive behavior driven by Mars. Saturn may illuminate certain obstacles, internal or external, hindering progress despite your own urge to move forward. It is a new cycle, but in Pisces too, it's a very different way of initiating. It is essential to distinguish between perceived limitations and actual choices that need to be made addressing any personal fears that may be hindering action and advancement. By releasing fear and reclaiming your own inner authority, you align your external circumstances with your internal beliefs, attracting support and facilitating progress. Break down your larger dream or vision into more manageable steps 
even within any current limitations, as you inch closer to your goals. Yeah, there's always something you can do in the background while you're working your way toward the bigger goals. While this conjunction signifies a new beginning, the energies may be better utilized for preparatory tasks, laying the groundwork essential for future expressions of your new self and grand vision. Okay, that's just Mars and Saturn hooking up. Let's take note that Saturn's in Pisces 2023 to 2026. So during this time, we will learn about sensitivity and boundary issues. We will upgrade our spiritual practices and use our imaginations for better or worse. Now, remember, when we worry and stress over doomsday scenarios, that's the worst use of your imagination you could ever do. That is a superpower. You need to always be imagining the best outcomes and asking for the open pathways and ease and grace to manifest them. Saturn rolls through a sign first, revealing all the cracks and weaknesses which naturally occur over time, and then it fortifies and restores that very same department. This also completes a 30-year cycle through the zodiac and prepares us to rebirth our social and collective reality when it eventually moves into Aries come 2025, 6. It's going to overlap, you know, it's going to go back and forth there. If you have Saturn in Virgo Pisces or Gemini Sag, then these years will profoundly affect your reality and purpose as well. For the rest of us, it is a time of major emotional processing, and if you do not do it, then you will create blockages, delays, and dis-ease within and around you. Let's use this once in 30 years opportunity to dream a better world that is more natural, sustainable, and reverent of Mother Nature. So yes, think Pisces, the womb, we are all connected. If one person's sick, we're all sick. If one piece of land is not doing well, it's eventually going to connect to all the land. So we are going back to this developmental phase that Pisces represents where we pour all of Aries through Aquarius into Pisces. It's the cauldron of creation that bursts forth when the energies move into Aries territory. So let's use it for what it's good for, recalibrating the boundaries, aligning your actions, Mars, with your intuition and Saturn responsibility for your choices, not postponing and delaying those choices, but actually going within to feel what's necessary for you, the individual in the moment. Very important. And this is another infusion for the spirit team to cultivating that communication or whatever it is that you need from your spirit team to help you navigate this crazy world while it's in process of transition. And this is one of the bigger earthly transitions. 2012 was a pivot point in the whole 26,000 year cycle, y'all. So micro to macro, we are living our little hundred years on the planet, witnessing the turn of an age, you know? So 13,000 years, 5,000 years, 2,500 years, big, 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 big cycles are resetting right now as we walk through. So we get to be part of that seed, that investment into the future. As Ye Ye says, we're ancestors of the future to prepare ourselves to be that. And right now, at the very least, set a goal for the next two years of being able to follow your instincts and intuition for what is right timing for you, the individual, and recommit to the steps it takes to manifest your dream and recommit to your spiritual practices and your relationship with your spirit team. That's what this activation is really good for. And again, it's setting a two-year cycle in motion. Now we get to the new Mercury cycle. Mercury is technically still retrograde and it's conjuncting the sun. When it comes out, it's going to go forward and conjunct the sun again and activate a whole new quarter of the year. Basically, Mercury goes backwards three to four times a year, giving us a chance three to four times a year to reset our mental body in a conscious way. So when Mercury and sun get together, it is a compelling energy that urges you to express yourself across multiple layers of existence. But because it's retrograde, technically at this moment on Thursday, April 11th, it's better to be doing your own personal review, right? Going through your journals, looking through your calendars, looking through your pictures. What have you been doing for the last three months, one year, five years? You know, it's think three, five, and seven. Those are the, the main cycles that reboot for us over and over and over and kind of speak to our timelines. Communication stands at the forefront of any Mercury activation, yet it is crucial that it flows both ways, meaning a genuine exchange of ideas. 
As you step into this fresh cycle of self-expression, you will be able to harness potent energy that is likely to leave a lasting impact or create a meaningful difference in the lives of others should the need arise. It is an opportune moment for travel, whether physical or within the realms of your own mind through visualization, or even exploring new facets in your immediate surroundings. Exploring uncharted paths can reveal unforeseen discoveries. This energetic influx brings forth a torrent of information. Staying alert is paramount. For those grounded and organized, this phase may yield well-deserved recognition from others, which is a testament to the individual efforts that you have poured into your own endeavors. Hey, congratulations in advance. Embrace this influx of energy. Allow it to guide you toward new experiences and insights while remaining open to the flow of communication and exchange that aligns with your authentic self-expression. So we know this Mercury retrograde is in Aries. We are definitely rebooting how we express our authentic self, our personal needs and desires. You know, there's a huge reset going on right in the middle of the eclipse portal. So again, it may not be exactly time to express yourself. I am going to take my own advice because I too am feeling these infusions of new ideas and new energy, but they need to be developed. They need to be grounded before I try to share them with you all. And you have to do the same thing with your creative ideas or whatever your personal goals are for this spring. It's like get that base right and then invite others to support. Now that is Thursday, the same day, that evening, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific is our monthly power circle call. We pick a subject every month to address for the free community call. All are welcome. I encourage you all to share the access info. I remind you that it's a conference call, not a Zoom, but there is a join online function so that those of you who prefer that can go that route, or it's usually used for my international students. But we're going to talk about the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus, which hasn't happened since 1941. So this is one of those big cycles that is also affecting us on personal, social, and collective levels that we can discuss on Thursday, April 11th. Now, to give to wet your whistle on what this means, I did put the description of what happens when Jupiter conjuncts Uranus. Because on one hand, it only happens every 12 years with a Jupiter cycle, but Uranus takes 84 years to get around. So for them to link up is math I can't even do. The convergence of these two energies often catalyzes Jupiter's expansion and Uranus's revolutionary change within social and collective spheres, which of course we're all seeing. And this naturally affects us as individuals, too. Their combined force typically activates personal awareness, causing the previously familiar boundaries, whether in personal or professional realms, to suddenly seem confining and limiting, evoking a yearning for some kind of radical and immediate transformation. While avoiding hastiness, it is still critical to acknowledge that this energy can substantially support breaking stagnant patterns or routines across various aspects of life. Balancing personal liberty with responsibilities is pivotal. Neglecting duties in pursuit of freedom might lead to unfavorable circumstances or more negative experiences. Enhanced self-awareness might prompt exploration beyond your usual limits, encouraging engagement in social causes, advocating for others' rights and liberties, which is fine if you have the energy and resources to share and to spare, Otherwise, initiating your own new level of consciousness is necessary before you can go save the world. This period may also yield breakthroughs that were previously elusive to you because now you are more ready to change. The amalgamation of these energies heralds the dawn of a new truth, a fresh narrative, and offers you a glimpse of the potential of a completely new path. Staying alert, self-aware, and making discerning choices amid these shifts is key to successful outcomes breath. This activation happens on April 20th. We're talking about it on April 11th to prepare for any kind of personal ritual you might want to do. So I brought over the whole description of Jupiter conjunct Uranus that's happening on 420 because this is preparation for our call on April 11th and these very basics you should know about. So now we consider where this initiation is happening and that is in Taurus, where the lessons are activated around your food, sex, money, creature comforts, and personal security issues. Individually, we are all evolving according to our own self-value and self-worth. 
However, Jupiter is a social planet and Uranus is a collective planet. So when they come together to initiate a new cycle of values and priorities, as the people shaping the narrative, we get a vote. We are contributing to this initiation. Our consciousness needs to evolve and we have to break free of poverty consciousness. And the notion that endless extraction of Mother Earth's precious resources is in any way good for anyone, let alone everyone. These resources are essential for life and should not be commodified. But here we are in a world that poisons natural water so that they can charge us for their so-called clean water. The last time they did this in Taurus was 1941. So do your own research about what the values and priorities of that time frame were in your world. Every country and culture was going through crazy death, rebirth, and evolution all over the world. Like all cycles, we can reflect on previous ones to see what worked and what didn't so that we make better choices this go-round. I remind you that the last time these two danced in Taurus, the entire sky pattern was different. The people and circumstances were different. So in 2024, we get to make new choices individually, socially, and collectively. This will happen around what we agree has value. And the most valuable thing in Taurus is Mother Earth. And this is a full cycle of raping her for our modern conveniences and so-called wealth. Now that we know better, we can do better by combining the ancient wisdom of nature with modern technology and vision. We can honor nature by using our consciousness, Jupiter, our intelligence and technology, Uranus, to rebalance these violations and ease up on our materialism, which is shadow Taurus. To bring it back to what this activation is good for individually, look to your Taurus house or area of life for where your consciousness needs to evolve and you need to be more of a creative, critical thinker to navigate the ending slash new beginning of an era. It's a lot. Do your best. And know that you are not alone. We are choosing new values by what we spend our time, energy, and resources on. That tells the universe what we truly value. So deep breath. Withdraw your complicity from energies and entities that you do not agree with. We're setting a new cycle of values in play. And if you have strong Taurus, Scorpio, or Leo, Aquarius, this is very personal. It looks like I listed the Jupiter-Uranus 12-year cycle. So like I said, they do link up every 12 years because of Jupiter. The last time was 2010-11 in Pisces. Now is 2024 in Taurus. And the next one will be 2037-38 in Cancer. So there you have it. Different alignments of values and breakdowns that precede breakthroughs to help us evolve our consciousness so that we don't get stagnant, so that we don't get stuck. So I'm going to try to cook up something interesting to keep it relevant to our individual level on that night when we go to talk about this at length. Oh, definitely good time to do the review of some of these replays I've got in here. The asteroids are very busy, the sacred feminine, if you're interested. Mercury retrograde, we're right in the middle of it. So part one, Mercury Retrograde, we covered the Sag Capricorn at the beginning of the year and this one that we're in right now for Aries. And then on part two, we went into the Leo Virgo Retrograde that's going to happen August, September. And the final one of the year is going to be in Sag taking us into the new year. So it's kind of two of each in part one and part two. Eagle Medicine is the tools and goodies, the replays available for the month of April. Venus circles coming up to the midpoint, so I am going to encourage folks to think about getting the Venus reading and the custom guide, which covers you for the full 18 months, even though we're getting to be 8, 9, 10 months into it. At this point, it'll cover you for a full year, March 2024 to March 2025. Well, we're into April now, so you see what I mean? It'll cover you for a solid year. But this one's good, especially if you have strong Leo Aquarius or Taurus Scorpio energy. Again, that was the theme of the overall cycle. But the midpoint's ruled by Gemini. So now it's going to shift to the mutable babies of Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, Sag. And we're going to do our reclamation. So I always invite new people in and a lot of people get their reading and custom guide right here and do the reclamation with us. And I always tell you that even if you weren't physically with us, you still did the release over the last 10 months. There's no getting out of it. No one was exempt, right? We all shifted our perception of ourselves, you know, recalibrated the authentic self default settings, you know, trying to find our hearts again, what we care about, what we're passionate about. 
There's a huge focus on our love life. So that's something I integrated into the class with Cinnamon Rose doing a piece on Mars and our sexuality and our physical nature because it rules our choices and actions, the things we do. And I love her because her background's in kinesiology. So she takes us into meditations that get us back in our bodies around some of this energy work. And I've been trying for years to get Venus and Mars to be combined in my monthly circle. So get the reading and custom guide for yourself and then join us each month on the circle to go through it all because it is more fun when we do it together. And you get a lot more out of it when we're in community. The Equinox excerpt is still relevant until May 6th. Astro 101, in case you missed the memo, has been rescheduled for July, August because yay, yay, and I, oh, this is what's going in this week. Elements of ritual, attention. By the time this gets posted, I'll have all the promo materials and links to register. But it was so popular and so many people, additional people who couldn't do it at that time, were hoping that you will circle back and this will be better timing for you to join us in the Elements of Ritual class, which level one is anyone new that has not already taken it. We just did a class and that Elements of Ritual that we just did in February, March, you all are coming into Elements of Ritual level two. So make sure if you've already taken the class that you're signing up for level two. And if you've never taken this class with Ye Ye and I, then you wanna sign up for level one. They are both amazing. We're gonna be running them on Saturdays through May and June, which is why I pushed the Astro 101 to July and August. Power Circle subscription is good for anyone who wants their personal tools and activations and transits so that you can keep up. And then there's a whole bunch of little perks and extra goodies that I put in there for those subscribers. So check that out if you're feeling called. And of course, the Mercury, Venus, or Mars activations, depending on what your focus is. I've got activations for everything. But it does help you cultivate a relationship with each planet. And when you're trying to figure out how each one affects you, these are a good place to start. The Astro Tarot reading is a two for one. We go through your current cycles and see where you're at in your timeline and go over that and your basic blueprint. And then the Tarot reading is usually for a question around here and now. So it's a really good one. And for those who have had it before, you do a follow-up. We talk about what your current needs are and we check in with your cycles, but a follow-up reading is different. And that's only 150. If you're doing the Astro Tarot, it's 200. And at the bottom of my blog is the Soul Sisters invitation. This is just a nice introduction to me and my story, my core values that run through all my circles and basically what you can expect from joining any of my classes. So check all that out. Reach out directly when you feel called. Join us when and where you can and have a fantastic week. This is Callie Beard of Karmic Tools signing off.